Big shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace.com is the easiest way to start your own website. Thank you, Squarespace. Why are you the way you are? Why am I the way I am? Why are we audiophiles? All this and more. Sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about what's wrong with all of us. If you followed the channel for a while and you've watched nearly all of my videos, I apologize. You're never getting that time back. But why I'm an audiophile is because of the movie Back to the Future. I watched that movie, I was a kid in the 80s. I really wanted a flux capacitor, couldn't get that though. But I could get a Walkman, because I saw Marty zipping around on a skateboard behind pickup trucks. If I tried that, I would risk serious injury because we had gravel roads. I don't know what it was about a Walkman, but I wanted one. And when I was six years old, I begged my parents and I got a Walkman. And from then, it was just going into furniture stores. Every tiny, small furniture store in rural Nebraska had some speakers. They all had a stereo section. So I'd go and just look at the speakers. Uh -huh. I wanted them. I don't know why. I just love the look of speakers. I love the look of hi-fi. I didn't really have any experience where I went over somebody's house and the music sounded great. It was, it was kind of like motorcycles. Anyway, my first real system was a used realistic receiver. Actually, I found the same model on eBay. It's this one, the realistic STA 700, a whopping 12 watts per channel. An FM, AM, phono, and an auxiliary. And that's what I was really after was the auxiliary. Why? Because I begged my parents years later to get me a CD player. And they did. They got me an Emerson CD player from Walmart. Walmart actually used to sell separate audio components. So I had my used realistic receiver, my Emerson CD player from Walmart, and a pair of Kenwoods with a passive radiator. I thought it was dual woofers, but one of them was a passive radiator. I didn't even know what a passive radiator was back then. I barely know what a passive radiator is now. That was the system that sent me down the rabbit hole to want to buy, collect, listen, lust over all this different hi-fi equipment. I posed the same question to my patrons, and this is a patron-powered video, which means I ask a question and then I read their answers. It's as complicated as that. But before we start doing that, how did you get into the hobby? What was it that sparked your interest and what was your first setup, your first serious setup after you're bitten by that audiophile bug? You ever wanted to start your own website? I know, you probably have a hundred times, but it's too hard, isn't it? No, it's not. That's why you go to Squarespace, squarespace.com slash cheap audio man. Put in the code cheap audio man, you get 10% off your first order. They make it super easy to start your own website. Need a domain? They got you covered. Need help in setting up an email campaign? They got you covered. Need help setting up your store? They got you covered. They have a whole section for support that walk you through things step by step. Squarespace is the easiest way to start a website. I've used it three times to start three different websites and I had one up in about three hours. The only thing you need to do, pick your template. There's dozens of them out there. Drag and drop your pictures, click on the text box, fill in whatever your stuff is about your website that you want it to be and then hit upload. Guess what? You got a website now. I've tried other things to start a website and guess what? They weren't very easy at all. Squarespace.com slash cheap audio man. Enter the code cheap audio man to get 10% off your first order. Thank you, Squarespace. My good friend. And by the way, when I slap my neck, it actually, I actually hurt myself. My good friend, Steve Zeidman. I love this story. He said it was 1973, went to a buddy's house, had a Nico 5010 receiver, Garrard turntable and large advents. He spun Aqualung. And it was so good, Steve leapt out of his seat or couch and exclaimed, this is what it's supposed to sound like? And then he was hooked. He was bitten. He went on to buy his own Nico, but it could only afford the 4030 Gerard turntable and smaller advents. Said he loved listening to it. It was 450 altogether back in 73. That's some big, big bucks back then, but it was worth it. I'm sure it was. I love that story though. James Swenson, it was 
1981. My stepmom bought me an op Optonica. I've never heard of that one. Optonica receiver and realistic cassette deck. I had a set of headphones, no speakers. I was hooked. I worked at my brother-in-law's welding shop, very nice, on the weekends for money to buy cassettes. My first cassette was Huey Lewis and the News 4. Actually, today on the radio, not the radio, title, it served me up The Power of Love by Huey Lewis. And then it proceeded to serve up all the best 80s music I've ever heard. Tears for Fears, Police, The Fine Young Cannibals, a whole bunch of stuff. It's interesting that he only had headphones, but it's also interesting that he has a realistic, I loved realistic. And I don't know if it was out of necessity because realistic was the only stuff that I could afford back then. But if you have any experience with realistic, let me know because it has a soft spot in my heart. Even to this day, I think it's one of the best values in used vintage gear if you get the right, it's like the two, the STA 2000s and above. Yummy, yummy vintage realistic goodness. And it's ultra powerful too. Anyway, if you like realistic, put it in the comments why. A big thank you to everybody watching this video. If you're new here, please subscribe and like this video. We have over 630 videos, and this video is run by my patrons. So you can go to patreon.com slash cheap audio man and sign up, and you get to become a member of a really cool community. So thanks for watching, like this video, and subscribe. Simon Hackshaw's first system was one of two national OEMs in Rhodesia. Tempest, never heard of them either. They made a system with a radio turntable tape deck called the Tempest 2000. Ooh. I also had two portable record players made by the, OE, uh, the other OEM, Supersonic. I got my system from my mom as a reward for good school achievement. That's always good, Simon. I knew you were a smart guy. The system progressed and changed with Sansui, Kenwood, and Technics coming into the mix until I got married. Now I am long divorced and discovered your channel. I am back into things audio rather than focused on the AVR systems. You know, I guess it started with my parents too, but there was something innate in me that wanted to listen to music. Rhodesia, Tempest 2000. If you're not from this neck of the woods and you had a stereo growing up or a system growing up and it's a little bit of a different brand, put it in the comments. Tyler Olson, his dad, had a pair of PSB monitors and an NAD AVR. He had them for as long as I can remember. I remember being a kid and just being in awe of how Days of Thunder, great movie, sounded on them. I still use the Stratus speakers daily in my living room. My wife absolutely hates them, but I will never part ways with these speakers. That's really cool. I, I wish I still had my Kenwoods. I wish I had those original Kenwoods that I had. They probably weren't a great speaker, but I don't care. There's something about that speaker that just made me fall in love with music. And it, it was on cassettes, mostly, and then CDs. And that little 12-watt realistic would get them going loud enough that my mother would tell me to turn it down. So I guess you don't need a ton of power to have a good time. Ryan Romska. My first system was when my dad took me for my ninth birthday to get a boombox, which looked cool, but broke in a couple of days. We took it back and got a much more simple looking unit that sounded much better and lasted four years. That taught me that looks don't count and sent me on my audio journey. Been great ever since. I didn't get a real decent home system until five or six years later when I put together a couple giant Sherwin Vega with a monster Pioneer receiver. I bet you wish you still had that Pioneer receiver. All for about $100. Then I rattled the house so much I actually shattered a window pane in my bedroom and shook the dishes out of the kitchen cupboard below my bedroom. I was really hooked. Good times. I wish Sherwin Vega would come back. Like, I wish someone would buy that name. I know they still make Sherwin Vega speakers. I wish someone that was actually interested in putting out good speakers would buy that name and then put out some good speakers. Because that name just has, I don't know, that 80s and 90s cachet. It's like the working man speaker. Mr. Matt Powell, friend of the family, had a full Carver rack. Dad had a Mutt of Rotel, Pioneer, and Tiac. I like the sound of the Mutt system, but darn it, that Carver rack looked great. When my folks moved, I got the Rotel receiver, but couldn't afford appropriate speakers, so I just ran with what I had. Didn't really get the bug, 
back until about 10 years ago finding Carver Equipment amp turntable at a yard sale. Two weeks later, I found a set of used 901 with EQ for $100, and the rest is a story of bringing home gear, explaining it to my wife, and playing slash swapping out upgrading. I used to bring speakers into the garage, and then when my wife was asleep, I would replace them and put them out. Now, I don't have to do that anymore, but there was a time where I would secretly replace speakers without saying anything, and then just hope that she didn't notice. I'm probably not the best guy to get marriage advice from though. It is amazing what can be found at yard sales. If you have any cool things, cool finds, have you ever found any diamonds in the rough? Maybe a barn find, like a car, but it's not a car. It's a really cool amp. Put it down in the comments. Ed Homewood from the Windy City. I'm gonna cut this down a little bit, give you the Cliffs notes. Anyway, his dad went out and outdid all of his neighbors and got a really cool system. Ed then started working in the business and bought a whole bunch of high-end stuff. A pair of Krell KMA 1000 Mark II Class A monoblocks, fed by a Conrad Johnson Premier 3 2 preamp, powering a pair of Apogee. Actually, a buddy of mine got a free pair of Apogees. Schintella planar speakers. Two Velodyne UKD 15s took care of the low end. The turntable was a Harman Kardon Rabco ST7 linear tracking turntable. CD was a Morant CD94 Transport and CDA94 DAC. Later upgraded to a Theta digital DAC from Mike Moffat. Stupid expensive Kimmer cables all around. I also employed just about every tweak you could think of. Green pens on the edges of CDs. I remember that. Cable lifters. You name it. I tried it. Then one day I realized I was no longer listening to music I liked. I was buying all this audiophile music. The Gregorian monks singing 12th century chants. I was losing my mind. I liked the who and yes and the cars. I took stock of my feelings and over the next six months sold everything off. I replaced it with a basic system using Harman Kardon gear, who we worked for, some energy reference speakers, and that was it for 25 years. Only in the last two years or so have I changed things out to my current Cambridge slash ELAC slash Schkit system. Now I get to listen to music without second guessing all the odd decisions. Could not be happier. I love the fact that Ed used to be in ultra high end and now he's happy with a very modest system. But the bug got him early. He went down the dark side and then came back to the light side. He's strong with the force. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night, we have Patreon only Zooms, Patreon only Discord, Patreon only Facebook. You can also use the links in the description. Those are affiliate links, which means if you click and you buy, I do get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more. So it's a great way to support the channel. You can also sign up for Amazon Music, Rune, or Tidal. Links in the description. Click, sign up. Even if you quit, I still get a couple of dollars. You can also buy a mug if you'd like, or you can buy me a cup of coffee using the thanks button down at the bottom of this video next to the share button. You can buy me a cup of coffee. You don't have to buy me anything. Don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge, listen, and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Chief Audio Man. <laughs>